Hi, everybody. Welcome to Our Worship Sound. My name is Peter, and today we're back with Ableton Live. And in the last video about live, we talked about how to set up and use loops in a backing track. And loops are um, bits of audio that are meant to repeat indefinitely throughout a song. But if your song is not based on repeating patterns, you need to set up what we call a sequence, which are full-length tracks that take you all the way through a song arrangement. And I'm going to show you the way that I do it, and there's certainly a lot of ways to do it. Um, this method is something that I've been using for years, and I found that it's something that gives me a good balance between flexibility as well as ease of use in what we do. So um, this requires that you either know how to record your own tracks or that you've prefer purchased some sort of professional backing tracks that you can use within live. Um, I happen to use Logic to record my tracks. Um, you can use any program of your choice, including Ableton Live itself. Um, if you don't happen to use Logic, um, you can skip ahead to the point in the video where I start to import the tracks that I've recorded into Live. So with that, um, let's go ahead and see uh, what I've set up in Logic. So we've got several tracks for this song. Starting off, we have a couple guitar tracks, one electric, one acoustic, and then a demo drums, a loop, demo bass, demo piano, demo vocal. And then uh, for the bridge, we've got a clavinet part and stereo cowbells, because of course you need stereo cowbells for a song. All these orange tracks at the bottom are all horn tracks. And what we're going to do to start is export all these horn tracks as one stereo track. Because I don't want all those open within live at the same time. So they're all routed to this bus. Just to make sure that those are the only things playing right now. That's it. All right, so I'm going to set my parameters. And I would export that. I've already done that just to save time. So we're going to skip that. Next, I would solo the cowbells. And then I would export those as a stereo track. And we would have all of our group tracks exported at that point. Now, you'd save the project and then save it as a different name. So what we're going to do is we're going to eliminate all the ones we've already exported, get rid of all those tracks, and then Logic has a feature called export all tracks as audio that in, in one step you can just take all the tracks you want to export individ and individually export them as their own audio files. So one of the things you want to make sure that you do is to make sure that the normalize is off. Um, bypass, you don't want to bypass the effect plugins. Um, you could either include the volume if you have the mix all set up um, or you can just leave it off like I'm going to do right now. Um, we're going to cancel out of that because, like I said, I've already exported all that. And we're going to go over to Live. So here's a blank project. This is what you get when you open Live. We're going to, I'm going to move this MIDI track up. I'm going to keep it for now because even though I don't have any MIDI to play, we're going to use that for something very useful later on. Um, I'm going to set the project tempo to 155, which is what it was in Logic. And then I'm going to create some extra tracks for the tracks that I've already created and need to import. So I'm going to find um, the tracks in the browser window and just start dragging them in. And it doesn't matter um, in what measure you line them up with as long as the starting points of the files all line up. Um, I used to export mp3s before I imported them into Logic, um, thinking I could just save space on my computer, but um, this is a much easier, much quicker um, better way to do it. Plus, it, it it doesn't end up costing any more space in the end anyway. Okay, so now we've got our space, or we've got our tracks imported into Logic, um, but this is not where we want to start our track. So I'm going to base everything off of our drum track here because that'll give us a clue. Here we can see that it actually starts in this measure. So after zooming in, this is where we want our sequence to start. So I'm going to position my cursor there, click, hold, and drag down right on that line. And then we're going to go up to Edit and Split. Okay. Now you can see that there's a shortcut Command E, or it's probably Control E if you're on Windows. But go ahead and split that. And now del delete all these extra things at the beginning. And now we have our complete sequence. These are the tracks we want to play. And But we're not going to do it in the arrangement window or the arrangement view. We're going to do it in the session view. So if you select all of them, we're going to click and drag these over to the session view icon. The session view pops up, and we're going to drag them over here. Now, we're not going to put it way up in the top. We're going to move it down to the second row, second column. Okay. We're going to, um, now each one of these 
rows is called a scene and you can launch a scene by clicking on the triangle as high as the heavens above the earth on your ways so if we click that it'll start at the verse right where we want all the tracks to come in um, now I use this empty MIDI track to keep track of all the other scenes that are going on what we're gonna do is just double click in the top right or in the top left um, slot the very first slot and it creates an empty MIDI clip and this is gonna allow us to do two things one it'll allow us to start the first scene which would otherwise be empty the reason why this is handy is because this will start the metronome playing if I click down here on an empty scene it doesn't do anything but having just this empty MIDI clip allows me to start the metronome which gives our drummer and anyone wearing earphones um, something to go off of so this this song actually starts with the drum intro so I would just start this scene and our drummer can go for it at that point the other thing it allows me to do is rename or it allows me to, to label each scene so I can keep track of what we have going on. And I'm going to include the tempo in here. Well, it's 155 because when we compile these into, uh, like, compile like four or five of these songs into one set, it's really helpful to have this tempo information because I'm going to use that and type that over here to change the project tempo to match uh, what the song needs. So these labels are really, really handy. I'm going to copy this with Command C and paste it into the next four slots. The reason why I do that is to keep a uniform color for this song. If I click on each slot individually, it'll come up with different colors. But here we have our first two scenes taken care of. Now the tempo scene and the um, as high as the from the verse on. So I'm going to Rename this GTBP verse 1. All right, so the next two slots I use as kind of flex slots. And um, what you need as you're going through it, even if you have like the whole sequence set up, you might get off at some point during the arrangement. Um, so th these two scenes could be used to provide kind of like alternate, like kind of getting back into it points. Or if you have sort of an open ended vamp or something that you don't know exactly how long you're going to repeat it. You can set one of these to be like the next thing after that repeated section. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to set up the uh, the bridge as our first flex point right there. So I'm going to grab that and then Command E to split it. Click the first one, Control click or Shift click the next one. Drag it over here in that scene two. GTPP bridge and then as you can hear this starts at the bridge go back over here and we're gonna use the last two choruses and if I wanted to insert some time after the bridge just have some flexibility I could uh, just kinda cut out the tracks and then bring them back in here when I'm ready for the last two choruses Final choruses. Lord, you are great, and we will pray. Okay, so those are our two flex scenes. What I do for the fifth and final scene for each song is I, I typically set up a loop um, to to use. And I have my loop track, but it kind of starts and stops with different um, sections of the song. As you can see, there's a big gap there, a gap there, and a gap there. Uh, I want it to to be able to loop continually. So uh, one of the things you need to do to need to do is you need to warp it. So I'm going to double click there, come down to warp. It's already set to the project tempo, so we're good to go there. I'm going to drag it over to the session view. Put it over in this slot. All right, now then I need to set the start parameter and the loop parameter. And this is a two-measure loop. So I'm going to zoom in and make sure that it's two measures long. And then click the loop button. And once we click on this, you can see from this number that it's functioning as an eight count or two measure loop so we have our tempo start scene as high as the heavens above. our first track scene and then our two flex points you can set up any number but um, any more than two in a live situation is a little bit much to keep track of in my experience um, so two is a good number of flex points, I would say. Then you have the loop. 
And then the final thing you'd need to do is just go through and, and uh, mute any demo tracks like I wouldn't want the vocal playing. Um, and I also need to set the volume levels. So to recap, um, there are many different ways of setting up live sequences. Um, this is just one way, but if you have other ideas, let us know so we can all benefit. Uh, and in the meantime, be sure to visit ourworshipsound.com and sign up for my email list there, and you can also download some free music there. Um, I'm going to also try to get this Ableton session out uh, on the website for download so those of you with Ableton 8 or higher can try it out and just play it around with it a little bit. So anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon with the follow-up on compiling a uh, set of songs in live. So thanks for uh, tuning in. We'll see you later.